7,000 pounds, pretty much dead on the Nizzo. It's a 294 bunkhouse Springdale coming in down here at Advantage One. Living room super slide, big camp kitchen, private rear bunk space. My name is Josh, the RV nerd, and I feel like there was something I was going to tell you about. Like, I swear it was like it was right, just right off the top of my head. Anyway, we actually have a, a very good familiarity with this RV. It was purchased just, uh, just down the street at Haywood RV by the original owners. Uh, basically, that was the parents. They sold it down to their kids so that their grandkids could go camping. And in the last three years, the most recent owners have only been able to use it twice. So it's had two sets of owners in the last three years. It's been used twice. By all accounts, it appears to have been very well maintained during that time. It includes, uh, there's been some updated tires. The hitching is included, some wheel chocks, a couple of nice little odds and ends in this one here. If you're trying to take your family camping on a budget and you want some private sleeping spaces, you're gonna like what you see right here. Now, while we're looking around here, just kind of getting our bearings, getting a lay of the land, uh, let's talk towing. Because 7,000 pounds, well, to a lot of people, that sounds very half-ton towable. And there are certainly plenty of properly equipped half-tons that I think could handle this trailer, especially considering its wide stance stability axles, which helps ease uh, towing because the trailer's long. A long trailer will more easily wiggle and sway and bounce behind you. Well, uh, a smaller vehicle with a lighter duty suspension and braking package may struggle with that a little bit. Um, you know, so three quarter ton all day and proper half ton tower, this one right here. You can see it looks good. The only, I guess you call it blemish that I've really noticed is there's a discoloration on the carpet right there, but it's it's dry, it's not crunchy. I, it, I, I wonder if somebody just did something like spilled a bottle of extra virgin olive oil or something like that in there. I can't really figure out where it kind of came from. Now, one of the cool things on this, this was a really special thing uh, uh, from Springdale at the time. Starting right here, you see that you've got a full-size sleeper dinette, but then right next door, we have a full-size sleeper sofa, and that's what Springdale called SSR, Super Slide Room. Usually, at the time this was made, you either got a big dinette and a small sofa, like a jackknife, or you got a big sofa and then a small dinette. And Springdale made their RVs a little bit bigger to accommodate that larger total seating and sleeping capacity. So this thing, being a bunkhouse, you've got three private bunks in the back, the master bed up front. Uh, holy cow, man, you could, uh, you could sleep everybody, their brother, their cousins, and one or two of them might be able to bring a friend with you. You may also notice that is a free floating table. So if you want to leave that open like a lounge, you can bring it over here for Dinofa time. You could take it outside for picnic time. You could use it by the outside camp kitchen, uh, which I think is actually a, a pretty cool way of doing this. Now notice you've got sliding pocket door. No, not even sliding. That is a swinging actual real door door right there. This is above the camp kitchen. You see that you've got the built-in ladder, so you don't have to heave the kids up there. Some nice built-in closet space in the back below that little mini bunk room entertainment center, which is kind of nice, too. These bunks are 300-pound rated, and in case you're wondering, like, what is this blue stuff? They put a pad down there, and they put, like, a little pool noodle just to kind of uh, even out the, the width of things. And from what I can tell, it looks like it worked pretty darn well. A porcelain foot flush stool is actually a pretty surprising find in here. And bathroom spaces are especially one of the ones that I look at in a used RV to see, like, how well was this maintained? Like, I look around the skylights, I look in the sinks, I look in the, in the, in the tub. I don't see, like, a pile of dead bugs and dirt and old antifreeze. This was kept cleaned. It was maintained. They did a nice job. By the way, did you catch how the television over here spins around? Where that is kind of nice is when we come in here into the bedroom space. You see that that TV can spin around for us. But what's kind of cool is something that the previous owners put in here for privacy, so no one's peeking around that thing. They added an extra little curtain here. They also added some extra little curtains on either of these doors. So you have the original factory shades, and then you can just totally blot out the sun. And I love how long those are, so there's no light kind of bleeding and sneaking through. How wild is it, by the way, that the sun can project light all of those miles away and it can find a way in through that window and stab you right in the eye exactly where you're parked that morning it's it's incredible to me by the way that's a nice top around a camp queen <laughs> now that you're done with my astrological lesson thank you for joining my ted talk 
And just like the inside, the outside is, is really looking fantastic. We're gonna start up front here in the, uh, the front storage compartment. You see where the previous owner's Anderson weight distributing and anti-sway system is included with this right here. Uh, looks like they've got a couple little, you know, fire poker stoker odds and ends. You've also got, um, well, I mean, this is obviously uh, an alien <coughs> probe hands after that you get the idea i'm joking now interesting thing this rv has power awning power tongue jack four corner power stabilizer jacks when it was first built it did not have power corner stabilizer jacks that is actually a very well done by the way aftermarket upgrade applied by one of the previous two sets of owners the original stabilizer jacks you'll actually find are still in a storage compartment here they they kept all the stuff so they didn't just rip things off and it, they weren't damaged. They just decided they wanted to update and upgrade to make it easy. Uh, big power awning coverage on this too. And uh, this is a rare feature on the world of stick and tin campers, wide stance stability axles. If you're not familiar what these are going to do, it's kind of like standing with your feet spread apart. It gives the RV more stability. They bounce less, the RV sways less. It's not a replacement for a proper hitching system, but you've already seen that you got one. For complete transparency though, not all the tires match, but they all look good and the date codes are good. That's a Goodyear Endurance. That's a Goodyear Marathon. And then the factory uh, original spare on the back doesn't match either of those. So I think what happened is somebody updated some tires then maybe had to replace one of those for whatever reason. Big camp kitchen here right next to that big power awning. So you've got pretty much maximum full campsite patio coverage here. Got the swing out cooktop with the propane connect down below. Real sink with a real drain. I love that drawer in the bottom left though. It gives you a place to actually keep your spatulas or your grill lighter, things like that. And the bigger fridge. Not to mention that wide open pocket of space right there. I don't know why. I'm looking at that and I'm like, a microwave goes there. Like it feels like a microwave goes there to me. Previous owners also added some LED accent lighting. They ran it all the way around inside of here even running it uh, a little bit like under those cabinet spaces and i think that'd be a really cool kind of look and glow at night now i mentioned the spare tire doesn't match the tires on the ground but it again it's not weather check the date code isn't invalidated or anything like that on the bumper i noticed a, a little bracket uh on like style bike rack kind of job my recommendation with those though if you are going to put a bike rack on the bumper take the spare tire off and store it somewhere else I don't like to have that much weight bouncing behind the axles if you can possibly help it. And this is where I was saying the original stabilizers look like they were just carefully removed and then it it looks like factory work, the, uh, the power stabilizers that are on the RV. They did just a, a heck of a job on that upfit. That's a fact right there. Now you may also notice aftermarket slide awning was added to this. So they, I tell you, uh, this was a good base camper as it was and had they just taken decent care of it like they did it'd be awesome but they went through they've done some things like updated the tires updated the jacks uh put that slide awning on there and they kept it clean conditioned it's not it doesn't look like it was baked in an oven under the sun it had to have been stored indoors out of the weather it's just looking absolutely fantastic if it looks like the right one for you give us a call and we'll do the rest you need you need well i would say hitching it's got the hitching Remember, you may need a little setup fee to get that set and ready for your vehicle, but that's no big deal. You need financing. We do that stuff too. You got a trade? We do everything. Give us a call. We'll get you camping. Look forward to hearing from you.